So today's video, we're going to talk to Dennis, the CEO of Battleborn Battery, about low temperature charging with lithium iron phosphate batteries because everyone wants to know what's a safe charging temperature and a lot of the data sheets just say do not charge below zero degrees. And I want to ask Dennis, what happens when you charge below zero degrees? Yeah, let, let's hear it. I want to... Okay. All right, low temperature charging. The problem with low temperatures in general with um, lithium ion batteries is that the lithium ion itself doesn't move very fast when it's cold. Um, but the electron still moves very fast when it's cold. So what happens is when you're charging, the electron goes from the cathode to the anode, the lithium ion goes from the cathode to the anode internally, and then you end up with more electrons than lithium ions at the anode. And so what happens is the lithium ions that are there get reduced to lithium metal. So you get what's called lithium metal plating. Plating. Was that right. too, too much? No, that's perfect. And okay. why is plating bad? So plating is bad for a couple of reasons. The worst case scenario is if you have a lot of lithium metal plating, you could actually um, plate lithium through the separator and hit the cathode and short the battery internally. Right. Um, but other than that, you know, short of that happening, you can still um, decrease the capacity of the cell by um, permanently deforming uh, the, the anode by lithium plate. You can actually prevent uh, access to uh, certain areas. So at the end of the day, if you try to charge a lithium iron phosphate battery when it's really cold, the performance decreases and irreversible damage will occur. But what is a safe charging temperature for cold temperature? Like what, what is the cutoff? It depends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, it's not that simple because it also depends on your charging rate. So let's okay. say you're very, very cold. You can charge a very cold lithium ion battery, but just really slow. Oh, okay. You know? yeah. So um, like, let's talk about the Battleborn battery since that's what we're making here. But Battleborn batteries have a cutoff um, of 25 degrees Fahrenheit. And that is, you know, below that temperature, um, at the location where we measure the temperature, when it hits 25 degrees Fahrenheit there, for the um, typical charging case, which we're, most of our customers are charging at a 1C rate, mm -hmm. you know, at 100 amps, they'll charge a 100 amp hour battery at like 20 amps or something, and that's totally fine there. Right. So, but if you're at 25 degrees and you're trying to throw 100 amps into a 100 amp hour battery, then oh, it might okay. not be great, you know, then yeah. you might be starting to do so. Um, to do some damage, but I will say this, that there's a lot of talk about the performance of lithium iron phosphate batteries or lithium ion batteries in general at cold temperatures. Mm -hmm. um, but lead acid batteries perform very poorly at cold oh, temperatures right. too. And so, you know, it's, it's oh, not yeah. a new problem. It's something that, well, when you're in cold temperatures, you have other electronics and you have, um, you know, other aspects of your system that will degrade or mm -hmm potentially break, you know, under the such operation. So um, we are talking about for lithium ion batteries specifically, but it goes to the whole system too. I see. And also when it gets cold, the internal resistance goes up, right? Right. So it's, right. it's harder to push in, you know, or charge, but when you discharge, you have that internal resistance increase as well. Right. Right, but, but, but you don't that get lithium heats plating. it. Oh, but no plating. You don't you get, get lithium no plating. plating. So we okay. We're we're okay with discharging cold because right. you still have the same problem. The lithium ion uh, comes over to the cathode from the anode, and the electron comes over faster than the lithium ion. Oh, okay. But what happens at yeah. that point is you don't get any metal plating. It, I but see. you do get increased resistance. So what happens is, at colder temperatures, a lithium ion battery, a lithium iron phosphate battery, mm -hmm. will not give as much capacity as is rated. So I for see. a 100 amp hour battery, at freezing, at like, well, it depends on your power as well. If you're right, really right. slow, you still get 100 <laughs> amp hours. But if you're at like a C over 2 rate, you might be getting only 85 amp hours. And how do you arrive to the number 25 degrees Fahrenheit for the cutoff? Was it 25? 25 yeah. for our cutoff, yeah. For your how cutoff. do we arrive at that? How do you hit that, that number, yeah. Uh, internal testing and, oh, okay, you okay. Know, and try, trying yeah. to predict the yeah. most common usage. Um, we think that okay. it, you could do even better than that, but we allow some leeway there. You know, yeah. We don't want to get you to the point where you could be doing any sort of damage to the battery. It's so interesting because on some of the data sheets that we read in the BMS parameters, a lot of people set it to like two degrees Celsius. 
and we're like trying to be on the safe side, but it sounds like we could at slow rates, especially for solar with a large battery bank, we could charge slowly when the batteries are cold. That's but you have right. to be very careful, and we're going to talk about that later, and maybe you know get some studies out and try to figure that out more. But that's so interesting that you can actually do that. But the performance will not be there, and of course you want to, you know, probably have like an internal heating system in the battery around the cells so that you can increase the performance in cold temperatures and then also insulate it a bit too. But um, um, yeah, I, I will say for our uh, primary market, mm -hmm. um, RVs and boats and that sort of thing, people are very excited that can, they can actually mount the batteries inside. Uh, so it has not been a problem, but as our footprint at Battle Room Batteries has started to grow, you know, different more cold temperature applications, um, it has forced us to look more closely at this issue rather than just trying to protect the battery We want to be able to have it operate under wider temperature ranges as well, and mm -hmm. that's why we have uh, an external battery heater heating solution But right. now we are also coming out with an internal battery heating solution as well, right. and that will uh, Be out this quarter. That's gonna be awesome something to look forward to which is so cool. And also, now that we're talking about temperature, what about high temperature? So if you have a battery and it's in a RV battery compartment and there's no ventilation and it's a hundred something degrees and you're in Arizona, what's the degradation like for lithium iron phosphate? What would you? Um, if, you're, if you're at over a hundred now and then, it's okay. If yeah. you're consistently over a hundred right. degrees um, Fahrenheit, um, charging and discharging, then you could be degrading the battery 30% faster. You know, there's certain degradation reactions that happen over time. There's just natural aging of the battery, mm -hmm. the, the chemistry inside the battery, and those reactions happen faster at hotter temperatures. So okay. it's like calendar aging, but sped up. It's exactly what it oh, is. It's, I it's see. sped up calendar, calendar aging. But at the moment that you're at 100 degrees Fahrenheit, yeah. your 100 amp hour battery can give you 103 amp hours. It actually right. gives you more capacity when you're at higher temperatures. Uh, so we don't do any sort of cutout until you get up to like 140 degrees Fahrenheit internally. And, that, and there's leeway there too. We, it's not that we want to... Uh, we want to prevent excessive aging of the battery at that mm -hmm. point. If you get up closer to, you know, 200 degrees or something, mm -hmm. you know, like that, then then what could happen is you can melt the separator inside the battery and oh, cause an internal really? short. Oh, that's horrible. And that would basically... At 200, you said? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, that, then that's your battery's toast. Yeah. yeah then, <laughs> you're then, like, yeah. oh my gosh. You're, if you have a lithium iron phosphate battery with little cells, you're, yeah. you're okay in terms of safety, but right. your battery is going to be toast. Yeah. Yeah. We've, we've had our batteries in ovens. That's crazy. We have. We've, we've, oh cooked, my we've gosh. cooked them and uh, no, you know, no thermal runaway or anything, right. but the batteries will no longer function because there's internal short yeah. circuit. With the temperature, what would you say if you could tell people the best temperature for lithium iron phosphate to cycle at? In all of your experience, what would you want those batteries to be cycled in? They, the, your batteries like to be at the same temperature you like. Okay. So like 74. 74. That's my thermostat yeah. at home, so we're going to keep it at 74. Yeah. It doesn't have to be 74. There's a wide range. Yeah. I mean, you know, you could be between, you know, 40 degrees and 80 degrees and your batteries. You're not going to be see any significant difference at yeah. that point. But um, if you're in the extremes, it's okay now and then, but it's the consistent operation of the battery if you want longevity then it's better to keep them consistently at a at room temperature. Mm -hmm. And if people want longevity, some people ask, specifically with the Battleborn, they always ask me, what's the best charge profile to charge to 90% state of charge so that they can increase the cycle life? And I don't think it really matters that much because it's very thermally stable and a high state of charge with lithium iron phosphate. Those things can be cycled like crazy and they're, they're fine. But do you have a specific charge profile recommendation that goes well? Well, yeah, we even go beyond that. We want you to top it off at 100%. Okay. And because the, the reason is that um, in a in a passive balancing um, right. uh, pack, like our pack has passive balancing, the, the balancing of the cells occurs at the top of the charge cycle. Mm -hmm. That's where the voltage separates enough that you can actually share current between the batteries. Um, and you want to keep your pack in balance. Right. Because that, so, that will help longevity uh, more. And, you know, the, the nice thing about lithium iron phosphate, it 
operates at a lower voltage than you know a, an oxide NMC NCA or LCO type chemistry mm -hmm. um, and therefore at its highest charge it doesn't age as fast mm -hmm. as those so that's why you don't you don't have to keep it between 10 and 90 you can cycle it you know completely and it's right. pretty resilient to the higher voltages as compared to other chemistries. Right, and a lot of people get scared and they see certain data sheets for like um, NMC and they're like, oh, I should cycle it like this because we have so much data for EVs. But we're like, lithium iron phosphate, you should be able to push that thing if the cells are matched and it's a properly built pack with quality components, I should also have that. But if it's designed well, you should be able to cycle it 100%. Um, without any issues. Right, when think yeah. about the, the voltage, and a, a lithium iron phosphate cell charges up to about 3.6 volts. An NMC or LCO cell charges up to about 4.2 volts. It's, right. it's a bigger, uh, it's a much higher potential. And that potential can drive, you know, aging chemical reactions. I see, I see. So it's just inherent in those chemistries, that's why the longevity for those ones in general, well, that's not. one of the reasons for oh, the one longevity. Of the reasons, the other see. reason for the longevity of lithium iron phosphate in particular is uh, it's just a bigger molecule. So as the lithium goes in and out of the particles, it doesn't swell and shrink as, as much, and so it doesn't crack as much, so it ages oh, okay. slower. And another question with lithium iron phosphate and balance over time, some people want these active balancing systems that can pull like 1 to 8 amps, and I think it's fine if you have matched cells to have like a passive dissipative at a higher state of charge balance mechanism, right? Just like in your BMS. Mm -hmm. um, what I don't think people understand is cell drift with lithium iron phosphate. How much balancing is required for your pack over like a hundred cycles? It's not that much, right? But like, could you explain it like in an easy way? <coughs> I mean, that's, <laughs> that's really testing I'm you to explain it in an easy way. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Again, it depends. Uh, yeah. there, are a, there are certain things that cause cells to go out of balance. Um, temperature extremes is one of them. I guess high C rate, right? Because you're pushing, but these cells, they're designed that you're like derating them. So I don't think that high load would cause Yeah, that. for us, it, we worry more about temperature extremes. Oh, temperature and, extreme. and, but okay. if you get out of balance, I mean, we, we're okay with holding, you know, a 14.4 volt just holding it at that voltage, it'll balance like overnight. You know, so it's not a big deal. Yeah. If, if it's if it's out of balance, it's not the end of the world. It just has to be rebalanced. I see, and also that leads me to the next question: Is some people ask about lithium iron phosphate? Can you have a high float? Like if you keep it at a high voltage all the time and you never let that voltage settle, because usually when it settles after charging, it settles down to like thirteen point three to thirteen point six. Um, is that okay or not okay? Because some of the marine guys will say you cannot, you, like all the studies that they with cycle tests, they would charge it and then discharge it, but they would never leave it at a high state of charge. Is it okay to leave a battleborn at a high state of charge for like a m months at a time? It's not as bad as with the other chemistries. Okay. Um, but, uh, you know, we've done our own testing and, you know, computations in house because we have certain chargers that do sit at very high, like the progressive dynamics lithium chargers sit at 14.6 volts. Right, exactly. If someone's plugged in for months at a time <coughs> in an RV park and they just stuck, you know, that it's gonna be at that high for the converter to charge all right. the time. Right, so again, it's, that's an issue not just for the batteries, but there's other components in your system that maybe don't wanna sit at 14.6 volts the whole oh, time. So yeah. it's, it's not just a battery thing. In terms of the batteries, oh, it's, good okay. Point. It's, okay. it's okay. It's not like, you know, for, if, you're, if you're doing it for days at a time, for a mm -hmm. week, it's, it, it's okay. If you start doing it at months, for months at a time, you might see those potential driven, you know, aging reactions occur, and then you might see a, a, a drop in capacity. Um, so what we uh, tell folks is, you know, lithium batteries in general do not have to float. If you let them sit, they'll sit for a year and they won't lose. Right. The only reason you actually float is when you're plugged into shore and you want to keep your batteries charged while running your coach or running your boat or whatever you're doing. That's the right. only reason you have a float, right? Right, right. So exactly. at what voltage will the battery stay at full charge? Mm -hmm. At 13.4 13, 13 volts, our batteries will stay at full charge. Right. And if you take it, we recommend 13.4 to 13.8. 
like most floats, typical floats for lead acid are 13.6, and that's right. perfect, right? Perfect, right. So if you're sitting at 13.8 mm -hmm. for months at a time, you're, you're okay. Right, right. If you're yeah. sitting at 14.4, you know, for months at a time. And in hot weather. And yeah, I'm, exactly. I might suggest floating if you have the capacity uh, to get a different float or floating at a, at, a, at a slightly lower voltage if you're going to be floating for months at a time. Right. Otherwise, just disconnect the batteries. The batteries yeah, don't have to float. Them. Right. You know, if you're not there, yeah. then don't, you don't even have to float them at all. And another question this leads me to, this is perfect, um, if you want to put batteries in storage and they're lithium iron phosphate, a lot of the sheets will say 50% state of charge. If some guy has a battle born, how do you want him to put it in storage? Like, I don't know if anybody has a shunt, uh, not everybody has a shunt to figure out 50% state of charge and then put it in a perfect little environment. Like, if you were just telling some guy how to put a battle born in storage, what would you tell them? The only thing we tell people is don't store them empty. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. So the batteries, the worst thing that you can do to any lithium ion battery is let the voltage get really low. Right. Right? If the voltage gets really low, you will do permanent damage to the battery when you charge it back up again. And what's the self discharge <coughs> rate of lithium iron phosphate? That's that's where I was going with this. So the self discharge rate is two to three percent of the capacity per month. You just need some yeah, charge. Just a little on. tiny yeah. bit, just yeah. Little. So can you charge okay. it fully? You can, because what happens is if you charge it up, you know, all the way, 14.4 uh, volts, you remove the charger, the, the voltage will immediately drop to like 13.6 volts. Then it'll drop to 13.4, then 13.3, mm -hmm. and then it'll just sit at 13.3 for months, right. for months at a time. So we don't tell people, oh, it has to be 50% or don't fully charge it or just don't leave it empty yeah. because the self bleed will take it down below where the BMS can protect it because gotcha. it's all internal. Right, because it, can, it can't cut off something when it's internally self-discharging. Right. I guess one of the main points I do want to stress, I kind of mentioned this, but that I think lithium, lithium ion batteries get a bad rap because of certain um, temperature issues that also apply to lead acid batteries. And it's just not fair to say, oh, well, lithium, you know, have cold temperature problems. Yeah. Lead acid batteries have cold temperature problems, you know, right. so it's it's something that needs to be considered regardless. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to stress that point. But another good point, a lot of people ask us, well, what's the cold cranking amps of the battery? Cold cranking amps is a lead acid terminology. And what it means is, you know, whether you're, you're marine cranking amps or cold cranking amps is what is the delivered uh, current at a certain temperature when the mm -hmm. voltage drops to like seven volts or something like that. Right. So that is a meaningless number for lithium batteries because the voltage doesn't drop that low. It's right. got a much lower impedance. So cold cranking amps, the cells can deliver far more current it's all limited by the BMS and all the connections and welds and everything else. So what limits yeah. the battery uh, current is the, the circuitry in the, the BMS, the distribution of the current inside the BMS, mm -hmm. and all of the interconnects between the cells and the wires that go to the BMS and out through the terminal. So it's so, the whole thing that matters. It's, it's not just battery. right. It's not just the, the cell. cell. So when you're yeah. for you do-it-yourselfers that are designing your own packs, mm -hmm. what you need to consider is not just the individual components, but also the distribution of the current from the cells mm. through the BMS inside the BMS and then out to wherever you're extracting the, the current from. So that's what limits. The current in most cases not the cells. Well I hope you guys learned so much from this video. I think we cranked out quite a few really good questions and yeah thank you so much Dennis for telling us so much about low temperature and high temperature and everything else but um, yeah thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you soon. Is there anything else you want to say or is that it? It is my pleasure. Thank you thank so you. much. <laughs>